Why News with Angelo Castro the Third, William Theo, and Darlene Basingan. Good evening. Former President Benigno Aquino the Third attended today's hearing of the Senate Blue Ribbon Committee on the Deng Baksha issue. Also in the hearing, health experts believe that the Deng Baksha problem should not be blamed to any government official. Here's why from Nel Maribo. Former President Benigno Aquino III together with former Department of Budget and Management Secretary Florencio Buchabad regarding the procurement and use of Deng Baksha. The former president says the Deng Baksha has undergone thorough analysis. Ang intindi natin sa Deng Baksha natapos na ang lokal at international processes na kailangan pong daanan natin, ay daanan nito. Tinignan namin ang USFDA, may five steps po ito. Di lang Pilipinas ang nag approve sa Deng Baksha, nao na sa atin ang Mexico at Brazil. Diin ko lalo, sa aking pong pakiwari at sa aking pagkaunawa, sa lahat ay binalita sa atin ng mga eksperto, dumaan na po ito sa lahat ng proseso para malaman ang kanyang efficacy at mas importante ang kanyang safety. Aquino and Abad also addressed the seeming rush in the procurement of Deng Baksha and the DBM's immediate issuance of the Special Allotment Release Order on December 29, 2015 after the President met with Sanofi Pasteur during that month. If we do not do this at this point in time, you are practically saying that the first implementation of this vaccine uh, will be in a... Um, 2017. But the dengue vaccine program was not in the JA. No, what, the, the, what we call the appropriation item or the Bahai is the expanded program for immunization. Former Health Secretary Janet Garin also defended herself about the issue. It is not timely. It is not, it is premature. In other words, he looks appealing. In other words, di paluto, ni luto ninyo yung proseso para umabot dito sa ganitong pagkakataon. Your Honor, inuulit ko po, wala pa kong kinalaman sa paglisensya ng Deng Vaksha. Meanwhile, health experts and scientists believes that the Deng Vaksha issue should not be blamed to any government official. In my opinion, the whole problem started with bad science. With in bad? I, bad science. Science. In, in our opinion, that's the root of the problem. In that bad science, uh, there were already signals uh, of harm in uh, seronegative patients many years ago, and it was ignored. How can you blame the president if the, pa the president was fed with bad science or wrong information? For now, Health Secretary Francisco Duque says that the department is now implementing measures to monitor all those who were vaccinated with Deng Varsha. The World Health Organization also says it is conducting studies on the data regarding the Deng Varsha vaccine. Uh, as of yesterday, uh, a completed, uh, consolidated master list of all 800,000 vaccinees. Uh, WHO again is seeking, mobilizing its uh, expert committees and seeking advice from them. Nel Maribuho, UNTV News and Rescue, Senate of the Philippines. Former Health Secretary Pauline Obial once again reiterated that she was pressured to continue the anti-dengue immunization program using Deng Baksha. In the Senate Blue Ribbon Committee hearing this afternoon, Obial read a portion of the minutes of the Commission on Appointments proceedings on her confirmation hearing as Health Secretary wherein she claimed that an attempt to pressure her took place. One of the representatives that asked me, asked me to buy more dengue vaccine and put it in the 2018 budget is no other than Oscar Garim Jr. The Philippine National Police or PNP Health Service is monitoring the 14th thousand cops nationwide who received Deng Vaksha. PNP General Hospital Director Raymond Salles says none of the police injected with a controversial vaccine are showing symptoms of dengue infection. Salles notes they have already held a dialogue with the said cops. The PNP has also set up a health desk for policemen who might experience symptoms after their vaccination. Salis says the vaccination was held last September and November, 
during the anniversary of the PNP Health Service. Hands off kami lahat. Not washing of hands, no? pero pati yung actual vaccination sa pasyente, hindi kami pinakialam ng, ng PCMC. Sila talaga, sir. Lahat. Philippine Foundation for Vaccination calls on the public not to fear the controversial Dengvaxia vaccine. Mon Hokson tells us why. A group of health experts allays the public's fear over the controversial anti-Dengue vaccine, Dengvaxia. According to the director of the Philippine Foundation for Vaccination, Dr. Lulu Bravo, there have been no reported deaths due to the said vaccine. Dr. Bravo notes the two deaths reported by the Department of Health or DOH are not linked to the use of Dengvaxia. Now is the chance for you to say, okay mothers, do not fear this because this is a chance for you to be vigilant. But, but don't fear because there was no death from those who were vaccinated. Although Dr. Bravo believes there is a possibility that individuals who receive Dengvaxia might contract Dengue, she says it will not be severe that can lead to death. She says 90% of children aged 9 years old and above have prior dengue infection, noting that Dengvaxia might even help the more than 800,000 children who received it. What Sanofi said is miscommunicated as severe dengue is not the kind of dengue that you see, which is really the serious type. Na may shock, may bleeding, may gan Hindi yun. E ngayon, Natatakot sila, akala nila yun because of the miscommunication or the communication gap that happens. And mind you, if we let this go on, people will live in fear. However, it is contrary to the statement of the Department of Health or DOH, Secretary Francisco Duque III, during the hearing of the lower house of Congress yesterday. A student in Tarlac who received complete Dengvaxia vaccination reportedly experienced symptoms of severe dengue. In the first hospital, the private hospital that admitted the child, the diagnosis was uh, severe dengue with uh, hypotension and uh, myocarditis. The Philippine Foundation for Vaccination, meanwhile, calls on the government to inform parents that the other kinds of vaccines are safe. The group says there would be bigger problems if the people will begin fearing to receive vaccines, which it says can save many lives. Mon Hokson, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. Meanwhile, the Malacanang warns that more encounters between the government security forces and the communist terrorists are expected after the Congress approved the one-year extension of martial law. Meanwhile, Malacanang allays the fears of massive human rights abuses with the extension of martial law. Here's why from Rosa Licos. Eh, napipika ako nitong mga komunista. So, there is one year. It's a big window actually for all of us. Eh, maroon ako mga attack helicopters. Kayo ang papapagpaktisan ko. Patayan pala ang gusto ninyo. President Rodrigo Duterte yesterday warned the communist terrorists after the two houses of Congress approved the extension of martial law in Mindanao until December 31, 2018. Consequently, Malacanang warns the public and the security forces to be more vigilant. This is because of the expected frequent encounters between government troops and members of the New People's Army or NPA. Well, I think the reality is with the, um, with the halt of the peace talks, there will be more um, military encounters between the armed forces and the New People's Army. No? Meanwhile, Malacanang allays fears of massive human rights abuses with the extension of martial law period in Mindanao. Roque pointed out the big difference between the martial law of today and that of former President Ferdinand Marcos. So I don't think there's been any legal basis for the fears of many that there will be the return of dictatorial rule. Neither has there been any systematic or gross violations of human rights so far. So what else can be done? Well, more of the same. We just need to be able to deal with threats as they happen. No? Malacanang also said the government will arrest any communists who will intensify their recruitment efforts. However, it clarified that it will not stop activist groups from staging rallies except when there is a threat against public security. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue, Malacanang. 
The armed forces of the Philippines and the Philippine National Police believe the extension of the military rule in Mindanao will help in their operations against the New People's Army. My Bermudez will tell us why. The Eastern Mindanao Commander East Mincom and Davao Police believe the extension of martial law in Mindanao is a huge advantage for them in terms of fighting terrorists and communists. According to East Mincom spokesman Major Ezra Balagte, the proclamation of longer period of military rule will help them further identify possible target areas in Mindanao. This is a tool to prevent the uh, spillover of uh, terrorism dito sa ating uh, ere, no? And uh, nakikita natin ito. That will uh, allow us to accomplish the objectives we have set and the targets na, na ating sinet, considering of the additional powers, additional troops, Like in the conduct of checkpoint, alam natin na sa batas um, basic yung visual search in the conduct of checkpoint. However, with the evolving significance of the martial law, nagkaroon tayo ng stringent application in as far as uh, the conduct of a checkpoint. For the Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency or PIDEA Region 11, the extension of martial law will further limit the movements of people involved in illegal drug transactions. PIDEA Region 11 believes the extension would help in preventing more illegal drug transaction in the region. The presence of our security forces is very visible. Then uh, checkpoints here and there. This will uh, naturally uh, create a fear sa mga taong gusto muhimo o uh, mga dautanis. Meanwhile, the local government of Zamwanga City believes that through the martial law extension, Mindanao will remain orderly and peaceful. We feel that uh, by supporting the new proclamation or the extension would be for the best interest of the people of Sambuanga City. Because we, 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 there's the possibility of a spillover coming to Sambuanga City. My Bermudez, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. A constitutional expert believes the new extension to the duration of martial law in Mindanao is not consistent with the Constitution. Here's why from Roderick Mendoza. An extension to the duration of martial law is only allowed if the rebellion or invasion which prompted its proclamation is still persisting. This was pointed out by Attorney Christian Monsod, one of the framers of the 1987 Constitution. He says it is already unconstitutional for Congress to approve the request of President Duterte for a one-year extension since the Maute ISIS rebellion in Marawi City has already ended. Marami na son kung, uh, kung bakit hindi tama yung approval yesterday. In the first place, why approve it at all if the military can solve it without martial law? Number two, even if there were, uh, then it should only be 60 days kasi yung original basis of Marawi is no longer there. On those grounds that I mentioned, pwede na sa Supreme Court na sabi, this is not consistent with the Constitution. Monsod believes the armed forces can suppress the new people's army even without martial law. He says the Congress has abdicated its power to review the basis of the extension. The Congress yesterday approved the extension after only four hours of deliberation. The uh, Congress uh, can uh, look into the wisdom of calling martial law. In other words, must broad the scope and power of Congress to be a check in the check and balance system of government. And they abdicated it, allowed uh, what I consider a chipping away or weakening or watering down the constitutional provision in order to accommodate President Duterte. Martial law was proclaimed in Mindanao last May after Maute ISIS attacks in Marawi City. It was first extended in July and set to expire on December 31. Roderick Mendoza, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. The armed forces of the Philippines warns the people of Caraga region against supporting armed groups such as the CPP NP or the CPP NPA. Monoxon will tell us why. 
Authorities can file rebellion charges against any individual or group found supporting the Communist Party of the Philippines, New People's Army or CPP and PA. According to Philippine Army 402nd Brigade Commander Franco Nemesio Gacal, the law strictly prohibits anyone to provide any form of assistance to the individuals or groups considered as enemies of the state. Kapag ikaw nandun ka sa anniversary celebration ng NBA na bilang isang terrorist organization, kung ikaw nagpapadala ng truck, nagpapadala ng bigas sa grupo ng NBA, tiyak nun, uh, ang kaso mo, isang katerba rin. Gakal also warns members of the media who will cover the anniversary of the NBA on the 26th of December as their lives might be put at risk in case a fighting between the rebels and government troops breaks out. Meron na bang pumunta ng Abu Sayyaf na media? para interviewin ang Abu Sayyaf o Maute? Wala, di ba? Kasi hindi natin masabi anong pwedeng ikaso sa iyo pag nandun ka sa grupo ng mga terorista at andun ka nakipag-usap at nakita nila parang ikaw ay membro o tumutulong sa nila, pwede kang kasuhan. Meanwhile, eight more members of the New People's Army have surrendered to the 23rd Infantry Battalion in the past two weeks after President Rodrigo Duterte declared the said group a terrorist. The AFP continues to conduct a community support program for the indigenous people in the region of Caraga to remind them of the programs of the government has for them so that they will not be enticed to join armed groups. Mon Hoxon, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. The government sees positive economic movement in 2018. Meanwhile, NEDA Secretary Ernesto Perna believes the extension of martial law in Mindanao has no negative effect in the economy. My Bermudez will tell us why. The National Economic Development Authority boasted their prediction that the agency will reach a stronger economy in 2018. Seeing a string of successes, especially lately. The Philippines, as you know already, it's already getting boring to say this remains one of the fast, fastest growing economies in Asia. This year, the economic growth rate in the country reached 6.7% in the first three quarters or nine months. In 2016, the Philippines recorded a 6.9% growth. Neda hopes this positive economic growth will continue until the end of the year and on to 2018. Neda attributes this trend in the economy to President Rodrigo Duterte's Build, Build, Build program that gives more jobs to Filipinos. The contributions from the manufacturing sector and agriculture remain the biggest. Alongside this, the Philippines sets to strengthen its relationship with other countries for better investment opportunities. Compared to the ASEAN, to our neighboring ano, no, countries, no? in the ASEAN region, we, sabi nga ni Secretary kanina, uh, we are second to Vietnam now. Meantime, NEDA Chief Secretary Ernesto Perna believes martial law extension in Mindanao will have no significant negative effects on the economy. Uh, I, I think if we go by the experience in Marawi, it's probably going to be neutral, at worst, neutral. Uh, or it could uh, boost uh, investor confidence if uh, uh, it's done, you know, what happened in Marawi was, is going to also happen in, uh, for, again, I mean for Mindanao, Mindanao pala, uh, it's both Mindanao pala, no? Some experts agreed to this. For them, the security brought by the military in the region will build investor confidence. Extension is only coming so it cannot yet have an effect on the economy mm -hmm. uh, we have had martial law in Marawi I think mm -hmm. for the last so many months and uh, the economy has grown still I think kasi parang mas the martial law prevent measure than address a real conflict kasi address naman yung real conflict my Bermudez, UNTV, News and Rescue, Pasig City. Next on Y News. The Pakistan Navy arrives in the Philippines for a three-day goodwill visit. General Ronald De La Rosa cites illegal drug problems and threats of terrorism as the reason for his extension as PNP chief. And over 1,000 residents of Misamis Oriental evacuated due to flood caused by Tropical Storm Urduha.
Why News will be right back. Suspense work in government offices, a government could owned and controlled corporations, government financial institutions, and state universities and colleges or SUCs on December 26 and January 2. This is for government employees who spend more time with their families and loved ones this holiday season. Malacanang announces suspension through Memorandum Circular Number 37. Meanwhile, government agencies involving different de delivery of basic and necessary services such as health services, disaster preparedness and response shall continue with their operations. Some commuter groups and non-governmental organizations are worried over the possible increase in transportation fares once the government implements its Egypt modernization program. Here's why from Ramil Ramad. Magtitiyak na ang mga mahal na presyo ng mga sasakyang ito ay ipapasa sa commuter. Militant Research Group Ibon Foundation does not believe the previous statements of the Land Transportation, Franchising and Regulatory Board or LTFRB claiming that the government's implementation of its jeepney modernization program will not result into fair hikes. According to the group, modern jeepney units are too expensive. It says prices of the new jeepney models is worth 1.5 billion pesos each. Ibon Foundation believes expenses for the new jeepneys will only be passed unto its passengers. Transportation Secretary Arthur Tugade initially assured the public during a Senate hearing that the modern jeepneys are not expensive. Tugade noted each unit is worth 800,000 pesos to 1.5 billion pesos only. Sino bang may ayaw ng isang efficient, safe, affordable at pro-people na ano na na klase ng transportasyon, yan ang definition namin ng modernization. Hindi yung comfortable ka lang, efficient, mabilis kang makakarating, pero hindi isinasang-alang kung affordable ba ito. For some passengers, the implementation of the jeepney modernization is huge help. As long as naman na mas mapapabilis, dun ako. Kahit na tumaas siya, basta mas mapapabilis na yung transaction, dun ako. Agree po ako dun sa ano, modernization kasi po unang-una uh, long term ano naman siya eh, um, benefit for everyone no um, kasi marami like Manila no very ano na very crowded toxic na yung area kasi nga po sa mga lumang jeepney so kung wala naman pong pagtaas sabi ng LTF RV that would be fine Tomorrow, the Department of Transportation will begin deploying modernized jeepneys on three routes in areas badly hit by Super Typhoon Yolanda in Tacloban City. Ramil Ramal, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. The Makabayan Bloc is now studying the option of questioning the process of the train bill ratification before the Supreme Court. Here's why from Grace Cassian. Makabayan congressman claimed that the ratification of tax reform for acceleration and inclusion or train bill was invalid. This was what Act Teachers Party List Representative Antonio Tino tried to raise yesterday. But after several attempts to take the floor, he was just ignored. There is no quorum, Mr. In accordance with the rules, I move that we ratify the said by cameral conference committee report. Any objection? Objection. The motion is objection. Support. Majority leader. Mr. Speaker, I move objection. to adjourn objection. until January. Objection. Session is adjourned until January 15, 2018. There is no quorum. Session is adjourned. Tino claims the bill did not go through the voting process and there was no quorum. He said violated Rule 10, Section 63 of the Rules of the Congress. Ang tawag ng mga floor leaders sa ganyang style sa gasa. No, so yun ang ginawa nila. No, para sa amin talagang uh, garapalang uh, pang, pang uh, gagago ito sa kaong bayan. One of the options of the opposition bloc is to elevate the matter to the Supreme Court. All options are on the table. Including uh, the legal, yung pagtakbo sa Supreme Court.
But according to House Majority Floor Leader Congressman Rudy Farinas, it is the right of every member of the Houses to question the process to the court. The Tax Reform for Acceleration and Inclusion or TRAIN is one of the priority bills of the Duterte administration, which the government claims will be a big help to low-earner employees. It is also where the government will source its fund for its Build, Build, Build program. Grace Castin, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. Soldiers from the Philippine Army conducted joint military exercises with soldiers from Singapore on Wednesday. Annie Mancilla will tell us why. The Singapore and Philippine armies conduct a joint military training at an urban warfare training facility on the small island nation. The two-week exchange, which started on December 4, follows an offer in July by Singapore's Minister for Defense, Ng Ng Hen, for the Philippine Army to use his country's urban warfare training facilities to support their fight against the rising threat of Islamist militancy. Fearful that Islamic State could build a base in Southeast Asia, governments in the region have increased their support this year, sharing intelligence and offering various means of assistance in an effort to stem the movement of militants across their porous borders. Um. The experience that the Philippine Army soldier has in the Marawi crisis uh, has allowed us to validate our doctrines and our drills in the urban uh, operations. Uh, this also further reinforces the importance of the counter-terrorism efforts uh, provided by the SAF. Uh, the friendship and bond uh, forged in this uh, professional exchange uh, will strengthen the cooperation uh, between the two countries and uh, help to improve the security in our region. Over the past five months, the Philippines has faced its biggest security crisis in decades in the southern city of Marawi, where more than 1,100 people, mostly militants, have been killed. Annie Mancilia, UNTV News and Rescue, Singapore. The Pakistan Navy has arrived in Manila today for a three-day goodwill visit. Here's why from Aiko Miguel. At around 9 in the morning today, the Pakistan Navy ship FFG-253 docked at the South Harbor in Manila for a three-day goodwill visit beginning today until December 17. On board the vessel are the anti-submarine warfare or ASW helicopter Z9EC that will be used for the naval exercise of the Philippine and Pakistani navies. According to Captain Dennis Kines of the Philippine Navy, it's a big deal to conduct a bilateral exercise with the Philippines' Pakistani counterparts as the two navies have the same goal of eradicating terrorism. The arrival of our uh, Pakistan Navy counterparts signifies our continued effort to further strengthen our ties between our governments and our navies. It also fortifies the PM, P, Philippine Navy's firm commitment in maintaining good relationship to our foreign navies. Commanding officer of the Pakistan Navy ship Captain Shahzad Iqbal, meanwhile, says they will share with their Philippine counterparts their knowledge when it comes to counter piracy operations. The Pakistan Navy is the first Navy being trusted by the Command Task Force 151 in terms of counter piracy. During our stay here, we'll be having a lot of interactions uh, between our crew, between the officers, and we will also be undertaking a passage exercise in the end. The main problems which we are facing these days is the international terrorism and war against terrorism. And Pakistan has been in the center stage of this war against terrorism and we are global partners on, on uh, this war. This is the first time the Pakistan Navy ship visits the Philippines under the term of President Rodrigo Duterte. As part of its goodwill visit, the navies of the Philippines and Pakistan will visit in historical places in Manila to witness the rich culture of the Philippines. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. The goodwill visit of the Pakistan Navy ship is seen to enhance the bilateral relations of Pakistan with the Philippines. President Rodrigo Duterte arrived in Pier 15 South Harbor, Manila at quarter to five in the afternoon to visit the Navy ship. He was given an exclusive tour to the world-class missile-guided frigate Pakistan Navy ship Saif. The president was assisted by some Pakistan officials led by Captain Shahzad Iqbal. 
the commanding officer of the ship. The president visited the ward room, ops room, forward portion, missile deck, and bridge. Philippine National Police Chief General Bato de la Rosa explains why President Rodrigo Duterte extended his term to three more months. Leah Ilagan will tell us why. Problem on illegal drugs, terrorism, and the New People's Army or NPA. These are the reasons why President Rodrigo Duterte extended the term of Philippine National Police or PNP Chief Police Director General Ronald Bato de la Rosa to another three months. This is according to the PNP chief himself. Kulang pa siguro, pero the standards of the president, meron pa siyang something na i-accomplish natin bago tayo mag-step down. So pag sabi ni President, okay ka na, sabi ni President, okay ka na, pwede ka na umalis dahil na-achieve mo na yung goal na gusto kong makuha mo. Despite this, De La Rosa notes he could not assure that he can address the said problems within three months. I don't know. Kung kakayaan sa three months, baka another three months na naman, then another three months, another three months. Hindi ko alam, hindi ko alam, hindi ko pwede pang unahan yung presidente. The PNP chief also assures that drug lord can no longer operate once his appointment as the Bureau of Corrections or Bucor chief pushes through. I will see to it na... Hindi na nyo may pagpatuloy yun yung drug trafficking dyan sa loob ng Bucor. Dahil ayaw naman talaga. Eh. Ano pa? Ano pang rason na bakit iba lalagay ako ni Presidente dyan? Kundi para tapusin yung, yung maligayang araw sa pagbibinta uh, ng pagtatraffic ng drugs. Leia Ilagan, UNTV News and Rescue Camp, Krame. Meanwhile, Justice Secretary Vitaliano Aguirre supports President Rodrigo Duterte's plan to appoint Philippine National Police or PNP Chief Director General Ronald Bato de la Rosa as the next head of the Bureau of Corrections or BUCOR. According to the Justice Secretary, he was consulted about the plan to appoint de la Rosa as the BUCOR chief several months ago. He says he fully supports the plan. In fact, Aguirre endorsed to Malacanang the designation of three retired MISTA of the PNP chief as BUCOR deputy directors. These are General Valfri Tabian, the current officer in charge of BUCOR, General Melvin Ramon Buenafe, and General Heriberto Olitoquit. Philippine National Police or PNP Director General Ramon Apolinario hails cops for accepting the challenge of losing weight under the program called Mission Slim Possible or War on Obesity. The PNP recorded a total weight loss of 625,637 pounds among all policemen across the country. It even surpassed the police institution's target of 500,000 pounds weight loss. The PNP also recognizes the police units with the biggest recorded weight loss based on their designated targets. With this, General Apolinario wants to continue the program Slim Possible to further improve overall health of policemen. We converted that challenge into a success for every policeman and policewoman who need to burn some weight, not only to work better, but also to look better. Ipagpatuloy natin ang ating nausog na katawan. In other news, the Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology, or FIVOX, is still monitoring the seismic activities of Mount Canlaon in Negros Island. According to FIVOX Director and Science and Technology Undersecretary Renato Solidum, the agency recorded more than 1,000 volcanic earthquakes in the area near the volcano. The said number, FIVOX notes, is higher than the 500 earthquakes recorded in the same area yesterday. The agency has raised alert level 2 for the said volcano and advises the local government of Negros Island to create an action plan in case the volcano erupts. Fivok says Mount Canlaon frequently erupts like in 2015. Pag alert level 2, most likely merong pag-akyat ng magma. Yun, yun yung nasa Canlaon ngayon. At titingnan natin kung itong aktividad ay magpapatuloy na pwedeng humantong sa eruption Aside from Mount Canlaon, Mount Mayon in Albay and Mount Bulusan in Sorsogon are also on alert level 1. More than 1,000 residents of Misamis Oriental were evacuated to temporary shelters due to floods caused by Typhoon Orduha. Authorities are now monitoring Bali Ngasag, 
Medina, Hingoog City, and Magsaysay, which are all flood-prone areas. Provincial Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Council is also monitoring the towns of Claveria, Opol, and Initao. Meanwhile, local officials reopened to motorists the Musi Musi Bridge in Balingasag after it was closed for several hours due to cracks. There have been no reported casualties or injuries due to the typhoon as authorities continue to assess the areas affected by the more than 12-hour rainfall. Coming up on Y News, a baby born with a very delicate heart condition survived surgery in a very first such surgical operation in the UK. Kina Visayas cops and soldiers killed in Marawi siege receive financial assistance from brother Eli Soriano. And two million pounds of ice create a winter wonderland at the National Harbor in Maryland, USA. More from White News after this break. Another batch of families of government troopers killed in the Marawi City siege received financial assistance from Brother Eli Soriano of the Members Church of God International. Robbie de Guzman will tell us why. The bloody battle in Marawi City remains fresh in the memories of Filipinos in the Visayas. Some of them are the relatives of the soldiers and policemen killed in the almost five-month clashes between government troops and members of the Maute terror group. Despite their loss, life still goes on for the families left by the brave soldiers and cops who sacrificed their lives to liberate the now war-torn city. One of them is Richard Vista, the father of Private First Class General Vista, who was among those killed in the battle. Richard says his son died after a bomb exploded at the building where he was. The grieving father recalls, Jandro decided to stay in Marawi City to give his seat at their chopper to a wounded comrade who at that time needed to be brought to a hospital. Richard is among the 25 families in the Visayas that received 50,000 pesos each from Brother Eli Soriano of members Church of God International or MCGI. <laughs> Giyapon kay ako na lang na siyang bali isibing sa lang para sa kong mga bata sa ilahang pag-eskwela. Salamat din ako kay Brother Eli, kay Sir Daniel Rason. Kasi kahit pa, pa, paano makatulong sa amin yun. The Armed Forces of the Philippines or AFP Central Command thank Brother Eli for the initiative. On behalf of the Central Command, we fervently pray that the utmost generosity of the UNTV, led by its Chief Executive Officer, Mr. Daniel S. Razon, and of course, to Brother Eli Soriano, be returned a hundredfold. The first batch of recipients received the financial assistance on the 2nd of December. The donation was personally handed over by Kuya Daniel Razon to Lieutenant General Carlito Galvez Jr., the commander of Western Mindanao Command in Sambuanga City. On the 11th of December, beneficiaries from Luzon also received financial assistance from Brother Eli at the Camp Aguinaldo. Brother Eli donated a total of 8.3 million pesos from his own savings to the families left by the 159 soldiers and seven cops who died in the battle in Marawi City. The said amount is aside from the 6 million pesos donated by the UNTV Foundation to AFP and 2 million pesos to the Philippine National Police, which came from the proceeds of the Songs for Heroes 3 benefit concert. Robbie de Guzman, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. Two million pounds of ice create a winter wonderland at the National Harbor in Maryland. Here's why from Nino Armilio. The whole 
holiday season is in full swing at the National Harbor along the Potomac River in Maryland, just outside Washington, where two million pounds of ice has been turned into a winter wonderland. 30 specialized Chinese cultures have been flown in to pull off an enormous display of Disney characters. It's part of an annual tradition at the Gaylord National Resort, which erects a facility dedicated to the sculptures and an ice slide kept at a chilly 13 degrees Celsius perfect, organizers say, for carving and viewing ice sculptures. So yes, our ice attraction actually was inspired about a little over 15 years ago for Gaylord Hotels, where we um, had people who actually went over to Harbin, China and saw the International Ice Festival. They thought it was an amazing experience and they wanted to figure out a way to recreate it here in the United States. Guests said they were astonished at the amount of time and detail it took to pull off the undertaking. But perhaps the biggest attraction for the kids are the enormous hand-carved ice slides with parkas supplied by the hotel, making a trip down the ice extra slick. Well, we actually seen the video that talked about how much time and effort and how much ice it was to take to build this beautiful thing. And I just couldn't believe how much ice and time people took to do some beautiful sculptures. Yes, I do. I think it's very neat and interesting. And just to think that, you know, they commit that long to come and do this for us to enjoy. General admission tickets are $38 for adults and $31 for children. Ice runs through January 1, 2018, before it is melted down until next year. Nina Armilio, UNTV News and Rescue. Those are the reasons behind the news, December 14, 2017. I am Angelo Castro III. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold. I am William Theo. And I'm Darlene Basingan because we need to know. We will always ask why. Thank you for watching. Why, why news? news?